All right. I mean, you know what? No, I'm not, I'm not doing it. How am I supposed to make jokes about a weapon that is this dumb? I'm a lion. It's just a vex. Not many people have it or use it, so its power is kind of off the radar. Okay, but, like, it's it's right there. I was doing D1 Vex damage, and it gets a free Arbalest mode? No special ammo? Like, what what the hell? Yeah, but but it's going to be much better next season, so why not put people onto it now? <sighs> All right, fine, we'll do it. But I'm not responsible for what happens to your quick play matches because of this, okay? <sighs> All right, here we are. It's 1 a.m. and I have to talk about how broken Vex is. I'm totally satisfied with where my life is at right now. Anyways, hi, welcome back to the Crucible Brothers. My name is Lionhearts, and today we're going to be continuing our little mini-series of what to expect in the meta next season of Destiny by talking about arguably one of the most underrated broken weapons in the game right now, and that is, of course, the Vex Mythoclast. But before we get into it, if your KD is running low, if you're not quite getting those 50 bombs in the Crucible, there is a 100% correlative chance that if you stop the video right now, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel for more content coming your way, that you will become the best Crucible player ever. If you're not sure, just go ahead and test it out, and I promise zero money back if you don't get results immediately. Regardless though, hitting that like button, subscribing, and leaving a comment helps out the videos immensely, so thank you for doing so. Back to the video. So, the Vex Mythoclast, a Destiny 1 legend. When it first came out in that game, it was ridiculously broken for a long time. Then it got nerfed and kind of descended into relative obscurity as Destiny 1 developed. But for years, since the launch of Destiny 2, people have been wondering, when will the Vex return? And we finally got it, back with Vault of Glass. The Vex Mythoclast came back, and it was bad. Yeah, uh, if you don't remember, Launch Vex Mythoclast was pretty terrible in Destiny 2. It hit less bullets than the last word at 50 meters, and it was just inconsistent. It was slow. It didn't really feel right. It needed its catalyst to feel viable whatsoever. And it was really only fun when you got the three kills and enabled the bullshit linear fusion mode. So Bungie buffed it, and then made it too good, and it terrorized the game for an entire season. And then they kind of walked back the buff a little bit to what the Vex Mythoclast is today. And I would describe Vex Mythoclast as a very special tier of weapon where it's definitely not in the meta, it's in its own tier that I call the Blueberry Terrorizer tier. A tier, for those who aren't aware, that is also occupied by such weapons as Taraba, Lame Monarch, No Time to Explain, Last Word, and depending on the update, Telesto. Vex is ridiculously strong as a quick play weapon because of just how the weapon is designed. When you get a kill, you get a damage boost. When you get three kills, you get a linear fusion mode with the hitbox about two last words wide. It's designed to run train in quick play lobbies. You pair it with exotics like Path of the Brain Steps on Titan, and suddenly your first kill with a Vex Mythoclast will buff you. You get another kill, you now get Path of the Brain Steps on top of your Vex damage boost, and suddenly you're hitting 50 ones to the head. You're killing people in four shots, with a fully automatic Vex Mythoclast. It gets stupid really fast. But the value of its overall perk setup diminishes in endgame content like Trials, because in a 3v3 game mode, it's harder to get the kills necessary to use the linear mode. It becomes more or less an exotic auto rifle at that point. Still really good in its duels, but it falls victim to the other problems that auto rifles as a weapon type experience in Destiny, namely the ability to bait damage and peak shot with hand cannons making Vex Mythoclast this paradoxical weapon. It's pretty much the easiest 40 bomb of your life in quick play, but it's not gonna be your first choice in a Trials match. I think you couple that with its rarity being a raid exotic, contributes to its overall lack of representation in usage rates. It is an incredibly strong, borderline overpowered weapon, but most people would prefer to use more universal loadouts. They'll wanna practice with primaries that they might take into Trials so Vex kind of ends up getting left behind. So then why do I think Vex is going to be shooting up in usage in the next season? Well, and I'm starting to kind of sound like a broken record at this point in these videos, Vex stands to gain quite a lot with how the game is going to shift in the next season. When you consider that special weapon usage should be going down, if you're someone who already uses Arbalest or Lorenz Driver, i.e. people who kick puppies, then you're going to want something similar to use now that it's going to be harder to get your ammo. So why wouldn't you use something that's just like Lorenz Driver, but also a primary weapon that has no special ammo? 
You add on its relatively good stability means it should have good relative flinch resistance out the gate, and it'll finally have decent in-air accuracy if you build into it. Vex is already strong, it just gets its weak parts stronger. So is this me saying batten down the hatches, wee woo wee woo, go run your vogs right now, Vex is going to be the best gun in the game? No, because as I already stated earlier, Vex is an overpowered weapon that is soft checked by how the game is played. Let's take another example, Taraba. Taraba, in theory, should be one of the best weapons in the game, and it's incredible in quick play and in the right situations in a game of like Trials, but it suffers a fatal flaw, and a fatal flaw that affects many great weapons in this game. Hand cannons exist, and the predominant playstyle centers around them, and the reason that hand cannons are so prevalent is because they do their damage in large chunks in a single shot, meaning that smart players will use cover and make weapons that are fully automatic get punished. It boils down to relatively simple math. Vex takes 6 shots optimally to get its kill base. A hand cannon takes 3 shots. So the hand cannon peek out, shoot once. You maybe shoot 1 or 3 shots back at that hand cannon. Even if you hit all 3, that hand cannon can disengage, have done more damage than you, and not have to re-peek into you to still have done meaningful chip. That makes it a lot harder for you to get your optimal time to kill off. The hand cannon can play its cover, play its time, and then still get relatively fast kills because of the high damage nature of its shots. This has always been the inherent weakness of fully auto weapons in Destiny, and it takes hand cannons either being bad, or stuff like 600 autos being so much faster than hand cannons in base time to kill to actually make a difference in terms of the relevant meta. Because when we play the game, we're not playing Destiny in ideal circumstances 24-7, even the best players in the world aren't. You're not going to get that perfect duel where you and your opponents are both inside your damage falloff, in the open, and not near any cover. That rarely happens, and as soon as cover comes into play, a weapon like Vex Mythoclass doesn't get as strong as it can be. Which is a really interesting paradigm when you think about it. Vex, on paper, is overpowered. And in usage, a lot of the times, it feels disgusting. I feel like a bitch when I use this weapon because it bullies people. But good players still make my life hard because they know how to abuse the game to their benefit. So we live in this weird world where there are soft checks to something as strong as Vex Metaclass. Therefore, I don't think something like this would get problematic or need a nerf. If anything, the linear fusion mode is more concerning because, again, its hitbox is like last word on controller. It's unfair. The difference there being that Vex in his linear mode only needs one shot to kill instead of six, right? Overall, Vex stonks are looking up. It's going to be one of the best weapons in the game next season. It already is right now. So if you haven't used it in a while, dust it off, go on Titan, put on the Path of the Burning Steps, and just see the free 30 bombs flowing in. This might be one of the easiest weapons to use ever in Destiny, so if you can't drop 30 with this, I can't help you. But that is the end of this video. Let me know in the comments down below, do you guys feel like Vex is proportionally strong enough for a raid exotic? Because I feel like raid exotics, they're like allowed to be busted because of the rarity and the prestige that is associated with them. And for the most part, I think Raid Exotics live up to that outside of the recently added Collective Obligations. Bungie, please buff that goddamn Pulse Rifle. But hey, that's just me. Maybe you think Vex needs a nerf, so let me know in those comments down below. While you're down there, make sure, like we said in the beginning, like the video and subscribe to the Crucible Brothers because it will make you the best player you can be. I guarantee it. And if nothing else, it'll help us on our road to 10,000 subscribers. So every time you do it, we feel good. You feel good. It's a good trade, right? Other than that, my name is Lionhearts. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you in the next video. Peace.